I've worked embedded and unembedded in Iraq and Afghanistan. And when you're embedded, the military makes everything incredibly easy for you. You arrive in Baghdad or Kabul, you're picked up by an armored convoy, you're housed and fed for free by the military, and then every morning the, uh, the PAO, the public affairs officer, will present you two or three different stories you could do uh, with photos, sound bites, even video clips for it. There's like, there's like eight ranks. It's incredibly attractive and easy. I mean, you can fill as many column inches or as many minutes of airtime as you need every day without spending a dime. We haven't been out here. What's the name of this village out here? No, I have no idea. They all yeah. did for me. Yeah. To make the decision to unembed yourself, I mean, that means you're calling up your editor and saying, look, I'm not going to be giving you a story every day anymore, and I'm going to be spending a lot of money because Afghans or Iraqis are going to be risking their lives to work with me, and I'm going to have to pay them. And I'm going to be risking my own life, and you're going to be implicated in those risks as well. Uh, and at the end of that, maybe I'll have a story that's great. Maybe I'll have something that no one cares about. Structurally, it's very difficult uh, to just logistically get yourself unembedded. And once you do, um, you're on your own. In order to do real journalism in a war zone, you have to leave the bubble. You have to leave the green zone. You have to go into places where sometimes no one is in control or a rebel faction is in control. How do you get into those places? It can be incredibly dangerous. And in every country, it's different. In every region, it's different. So part of being unembedded is really studying where are you going to go, finding local people to work with that you can trust, because what you're really doing is you're putting your life in the hands of your colleagues. You know, Rick and I worked as a small team together. Now, Rick oftentimes would have you know, a camera slung over his shoulder and another camera you know, filming in a very dangerous place. And if anything were to go wrong, we had to know that we would trust the other person with our life. The same is true of our local colleagues in Afghanistan, Somalia, and Yemen. We had to know we could trust them. And in some places, you make a calculation that you don't want to have any security whatsoever. You don't want to draw attention to you. You want to roll in a very light manner and try as much as you can to blend in. Because our belief was that if we rolled in with a bunch of armed guys, uh, we'd be targets. When Jeremy and I began, we would often arrive at houses and be the first Americans that this family had seen since the American soldiers that kicked their door in and killed half their family. And yet, they invariably invited us in and they sat down with us and they shared with us these incredibly painful stories, the most painful stories of their lives. And they did it because I think that they believe deeply in the power of their stories. They believe that their stories matter. It matters to them deeply that American people will, will know about what happened in Gardez or will know the name of the village Al Majla. As journalists, that's a heavy burden to carry when you stop thinking of yourself as some kind of protected class, that you don't have to have a human stake in the lives of the people that have let you into their homes. When you, when you dismiss that and you say, I'm a human being and I'm gonna approach them, not just as a journalist, but as a fellow human, and I'm gonna take seriously the burden I now carry because they've trusted me, um, then you're not just writing a story or making a movie, you're, you're, you're trying to, to force the issue and say, how can we as a society not fight for justice for these people? And that's part of why we made this film. It's, it's, not, it's not just to tell a story, it's also meant to be a sort of wake-up call that we as a society recognize the humanity of the people that live on the other side of our missiles. The global war on terror is the most important story of our generation. And it's a story that is unfolding in the shadows and is not seen by the majority of Americans. And the very few times that we do see war, we're only allowed to see civilians in Afghanistan or Yemen or wherever as tiny little gray smudges filmed from some weaponized aerial platform uh, that then disappear in puffs of smoke. And, you know, and we're told that that's objective, narrated to us by, by former generals on cable news. Um, we begin our project 
trying to put the camera on the other side of that military media apparatus and show those little gray specks as human beings, to show the real life of people who are living this war on the ground. The most important decision you make when you start a film is where you're going to stand. I believe that we have been programmed in our society to dehumanize others around the world. And part of our job as journalists is to try to reclaim the humanity of the people that we're told are the enemies, in many cases with no evidence that they're actually an enemy. Um, and, and so I, I, I see the struggle uh, against embedded journalism, not just as being trapped in a green zone and how do you break out of it, um, but how do you break out of the mental green zone that we're conditioned to embrace.